The question is that this House has considered visa arrangements for inshore industry fishing crews. I call Anthony Magnus. Pleasure to be able to serve under your chairmanship, and can I begin by congratulating the honourable member for Strangford? Because, if I may say so politely, in his lengthy speech, he has probably covered every area that each and every one of us will end up uh, asking for. And I have to say. I almost 100% agree with his requests of the Minister and his suggestions for how we can help the fishing sector and indeed how we can actually turn some of the issues that have been long-standing uh, and difficult for the industry, how we can turn them on the head. Uh, Mr Chairman, if you were to come to South Devon, uh, which you are of course always welcome, you would be greeted by three extraordinary fishing towns of great variety in the form of Brixham, Solcombe and Dartmouth. And Brixham is the most valuable fishing port in England, as we all know. I spend half my time in this place talking about it. But in Dartmouth and in Solcombe, there is a large contingent of inshore fishermen. Uh, whether they are crabbers, day fishermen, they really are impacted by these uh, measures. And indeed, the entire town of Brixham, which is having, I think it is now on its third year of record sales, by the way, a point that is often overlooked in the mainstream media, um, they are absolutely dependent on visa arrangements. And it is my pleasure as their representative to be able to stand up in this place and to talk about how we can do more for the fishing sector. Because, as the Honourable Gentleman said from uh, the north of Scotland, you know, all too often fishing is an afterthought. It is not given the full consideration about the fact that this is a massive lever in which we can help level up within our coastal communities, in which we can create good, well-paying jobs that are highly skilled, uh, that allow our coastal communities to flourish. You, in fact, only need to read Professor Whitty's report on how to level up in coastal communities to see that there is a huge opportunity for us to do more for our fishing industry, and that does start by changing our attitudes. And it starts also by changing our habits, Mr Chairman. Just changing our habits and eating more seafood and more fish would help us grow the UK's domestic market. And it's something that uh, great people in my constituency, such as Mitch Tonks, uh, who is a chef in South Devon, is leading a campaign to support the fishing sector and to talk about uh, the fishing community and the great sources of food that we have on our coastline. But I come back to this point about changing attitudes, uh, Mr Chairman, because if we want to attract people to go into the fishing community, it is not going to be done by handing out visas to foreign workers. We have to change the approach. So I'm going to welcome the government's measures as a temporary measure, because in the in-between period, I hope what we can do is put more into training. So just on the visa arrangements at the moment, I think it's absolutely welcome that the government has reduced the costs um, around the visas, has reduced the threshold around the sal salary requirement. But I come to absolutely the point that the Honourable Gentleman was making around the B1 English language requirement. If we are trying to fill a gap right now because there are not enough workers in the fishing community, how on earth do we actually hope to achieve that when the B1 language course is so complicated and indeed in many instances lengthy? So I would be delighted to give it away. Um. Let's, for the sake of argument, say that we do manage to train people to the B1 level in order to meet the visa requirements. The House has heard this afternoon from the Honourable Gentleman in Strangford about the nature of the work that is undertaken on a fishing boat, the hard, difficult, occasionally dangerous work. Is it just possible that people who have achieved the B1 standard of English might then want to take that skill and qualification and do a job that was perhaps a more suited to somebody with that level of language skill? Tony Macknell. I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his intervention. And that is quite possible. But again, you know, the purpose of this debate, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to shore up support for the fishing community. We're trying to make sure uh, that it continues to thrive. We have come up with a solution, but there is just one small little roadblock here which requires the Minister to just move the suggestion on the B2 point is one well made. But I might just make the point, there is an organisation called Crew Services uh, that operates in the United Kingdom. It has 325 non-UK crew on its books who are working in the UK at the moment, of which 
only six have the B1 English language requirement. I think that shows in a very neat way the difficulty we have in being able to bring people in in this helpful manner that the Minister has, has brought forward, but actually the limitations of what we're asking at the moment, and it is going to be very, very difficult. Now, actually, a lot has been mentioned around training, and I realise that training is a lengthy process, and I just say to the Honourable Gentleman from um, Banff and Buchan that if he wishes to go out on a vessel, he is welcome any time down... Uh, to South Devon to do so. I went out two years ago on a trawler for 36 hours. It's probably the last time I've done an honest day's work, uh, Mr Chairman, but it was uh, incredibly hard work. And one of the things that was really um, uh, expressed to me was the skill that goes with it, the dangers that come with it. I would like to tell you that I was you know, thrown, uh, uh, thrown around this vessel by stormy seas, but unfortunately it was as calm as anything. But for 36 hours, doing two hours on, two hours off, you see the industry at work and you see how hard people work, but you also see the benefits of that sector. So the people working on that boat in that instance were young people who had trained locally, they're trained in the southwest, they were using the local businesses to try and get into the sector, and it was working well. But we clearly need to do more on this. And so I just make a point, which is that if visa requirements and changes are going to be implemented, which they are, and it's very welcome, that we also take in hand training opportunities. Because uh, in my own constituency of Totnes and South Devon, South Devon College have actually set up a training school, um, which is at the Noss on Dart site, it is now launching its own Fisher apprenticeship scheme. It's had good attendance so far. There are a few uh, minor niggles at the moment to how that, pro that, that program is running, but more and more people are getting into it. And we have to encourage them in this place. And I will absolutely declare my interest for this one, Mr Chairman, which is that we now need a fishing minister, a dedicated, standalone fishing minister to be able to do this. And I'm sure it's uh, within the good sense of the minister to be able to advocate that uh, to DEFRA. Um, so... I congratulate the government on the two steps that I think are very positive in the reduction of costs and the reduction of salary threshold. Please look at the language one again. That is what my industry is calling for. And can I also just, and I know, and I'm not going to steal the speech of the Honourable Gentleman from Banff and Buchan, but can we also look at the processing sector? I have a large amount of businesses in my constituency that are exporting around the world. They rely heavily, uh, not only on the fishing community, but also on... Uh, having visas to allow people to work in their sector, but that is something that will um, come up undoubtedly further on. Um, I am very proud, Mr Chairman, to be able to represent the fishing community. There are small asks that can make it easier, better, where we can deregulate, where we can make it more efficient. These are steps that I don't think cost the government much. It will be a, uh, something that will be applauded by the industry, and I hope the Minister has heard both my speech and the member for Strangford and can implement those requests. Thank you. Alistair.